Now, in part A of this question, we've got to expand 1 plus AX to the power 10 using the binomial expansion and just write down the first four terms in ascending powers of X. Now, just to remind you, if you've forgotten the binomial expansion, what I've done here is put down two versions. They'll give you exactly the same answer at the end of the day, but two versions of the binomial expansion that we could use in this question. The first, I've written that if you've got two terms, a plus b, say, all to the power n. Now, to use this formula, though, n must be a positive integer, which it is in this particular question. 10 is a positive integer. So, if you have a plus b to the power n, it's the same as nc0, a to the power n times b to the power 0, plus nc1, a to the power n minus 1, b to the 1, plus, and it goes on like that, you can see here. Or, you can have the universal formula for the binomial expansion, that when you have anything of the form 1 plus b to the power n, and n can be anything you like, it doesn't have to be a positive integer, this formula always works. It's always identical to 1 plus the power n times b, plus n times n minus 1 b squared over 2 factorial, and so on. All right. What I'm going to do though is show you how we can use not only this formula, but this one, and you can compare both methods, see how you feel about them, and we should be able to work this question out. OK, so using the first one, don't forget to write is identical to rather than equals. We're dealing with an expression here. In this first one, a is the 1, and b is now ax, and n is the 10. All right? So, nc0. Now, to save space, what I'm going to do is write an alternative notation for this. You can write this as 10 over 0 in a bracket, almost like a column vector, although it's obviously not a column vector. 10c0, and then you have the first term, a, which is 1, to the power n, 1 to the power 10. Now, I know that 1 to the power 10 is 1, but I'm purposely writing this in just so you can see the pattern structure. I mean, if this wasn't a 1 in another example, then you'd definitely have to write these values in. OK, so we've got 1 to the power 10, and then it's the other term, b, to the power 0. The other term being ax, and that's to the power 0. Make sure you write everything in brackets as well. So we now go on to the next term, so that's 10c1, 10, 10, 1. Drop the power here by 1, so that's now 1 to the power 9. And increase this power, so we have ax to the power 1. Then the next term, 10c2, 10 with the 2 there. Drop the power from 9 down by 1, so that's 1 to the power 8. Increase the power here on the ax term by 1, so that's ax to the power 2. So already we've got the first three terms. We need one more term, so that's going to be 10c3, that's 10, 3. Drop the power here from the 8 down to 7, so that's 1 to the power 7. And then increase the power here by 1, so that's ax to the power 3. And don't forget to write plus and so on, even though we've got to write these first four terms. So all we need to do now is just work out what each of these terms come to. Well, 10c0 you can do on your calculator, but you should really know this. It is 1. 1 to the power 10 is 1, and a to the power x, sorry, ax to the power 0, I should say, is 1. So that all comes to 1. 10c1 is going to be 10. 1 to the power 9 is 1, and so you've just got ax times the 10. So you have 10. AX. Then we have 10C2, so you can work that out in your calculator, and you'll find that you get 45. So you end up with 45A squared 
x squared. So 45 a squared x squared. And the final term, the fourth term, be plus 10c3 comes out to 120. And you've got a cubed x cubed. So 120 a cubed x cubed. And again, don't forget plus and so on. So that really is the expansion then, but that's done via this formula here. I'll just run through how we do it using this version of the formula. So we start again with 1 plus ax to the power 10. And using the second formula, we're OK here, we've got the 1. right? We must always make sure that if we're using this, we have a 1 at the front. So we have that. The b here is now going to be the ax, and n is the 10. So according to the formula, we have 1 plus the power n times b, b being ax, so that would be 10 times the ax. Then we move on to this term here. So it is n, which is 10, multiplied by n minus 1. So we take 1 away from the power, that's 9. Divide by 2 factorial. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. So I'll just write that in as 2 times 1. Times the b term squared. b term, remember, is ax. So that's ax all squared. Moving on now to the fourth term. We have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. So that's going to be the power 10 times n minus 1. So that's 9 times n minus 2, so that's going to be 8, all over 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1, multiplied by the b term cubed. b, remember, is ax, so that's ax all cubed, plus, and so on. So working this out, we have 1 plus 10ax. And if you do this one, 10 times 90 is, sorry, 10 times 9, I should say, is 90, divided by 2 is 45. So we have 45 a squared x squared. And finally, we can do a bit of cancelling here, if you like. We can see that uh, the 2, for instance, cancels into the 8, 4 times, and the 3 cancels into the 9, 3 times. And so you have 3 fours are 12, times 10 is 120, so you have plus 120 a squared x cubed, plus, and so on. And so, as you can see, both give you exactly the same expansion as you would expect, and you can compare the methods. And that brings us now to the end of part A.